Um, looks like Representative Elfendorf has a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, as you're speaking, I just I just had some different questions. If you could help me answer some of those. So, for example, um, I heard you say you were looking at sixty five million dollars for solar for schools. And can you explain a little bit more what schools and how many would sixty five million reach? Commissioner Kolesh. Madam Chair, Representative, uh, that, that uh, I, I don't want to speak too much because that is a Department of Commerce request. Uh, my understanding of the, the proposal is that that would uh, provide enough funding to support solar on schools for every, every school that is outside the Excel territory. And then within the Excel territory, there's a different program that's available for those schools. So the intent would be, as I understand it, uh, but, but I would defer to Department of Commerce to describe this was be to we could, would want to target to provide solar on every school in Minnesota. And maybe I can just provide a little um, background too as the author of the solar on schools bill last year. Um, the um, commerce program will put um, 40 kilowatts of solar on those buildings outside of the Excel territory and that um, when they released this program last year we I think it was $8 million that we had, um, there was significant interest and not nearly enough funds to um, take care of all of the interest. And I think that's the impetus of this um, governor's budget propo proposal. Okay. Commissioner. Er Thank you, Madam Chair. So okay. what of that $65 million then? Like what percentage of, of the energy use with those solar, I mean, are we looking to, you know, to go that they're just running off of the solar? Or I'm just confused on that. on that. How many schools are we touching and then what percentage reduction would that happen with those solar? Do you have those numbers? Um, I don't. I, we can certainly reach out to the Department of Commerce for those specific okay. numbers and I'm sure it would vary from building to building. Um, but yeah, we can look into those for you. Thank you, Madam Chair. So um, just in reference, so last last week, you know, we, we had heard an update from the Prairie um, Island Indian Tribe and um, they had $42 million that they're implementing and you know, that's what I'm just trying to compare. Sure. And I know that, you know, they're nowhere near, you know, to being like net zero with that kind of. So it doesn't, to me, it doesn't seem like 65 million for schools, um, you know, that that's going to, that's going to take it down net zero. Um, and then I, have we also, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, can I ask another question? Okay. So as, as we are driving this demand for solar up and up, um, have we taken into account how much increased cost this is going to be and if it's going to be more difficult for us to get these solar panels? Is that is that being taken into account just because we're pushing us on such an accelerated time frame? I, I'm wondering, are there some obstacles coming down the road that maybe maybe we haven't thought of? Mr. Kolak? Yeah. Madam Chair, Representative, I, I would have to defer to the Department of Commerce on, on their understanding of what the impacts of this bill would be on supply chain and availability of solar panels in relation to Minnesota and then what's happening at the with federal funds as well. Okay, and just one more if I can please. Okay, Madam Chair, thank you so much Commissioner. You are very passionate about um, the environment and the climate and I appreciate that about you. Um, I don't think most people in this room know that I am in a sales business um, that we specialize in um, environmental clean greening uh, products and I've been very passionate about that my whole life, about reducing chemicals into the environment, um, reducing plastics, and that is my passion. Uh, so for 14 years, I have built a large business that spreads across the United States and um, have, have uh, been uh, very involved in educating people on uh, green uh, cleaning and reducing our emissions and many things that we talk about today. Um, so I am very passionate about this topic. Uh, so I just want to, I would just want to ask you really quick, but I know you said uh, during your, during your presentation, you know, that we're in this, we're in a dire crisis and that temperatures are rising. So I just want to go back. And in the seventies, uh, we also had a time where it was global cooling. Um, in the eighties, we had global warming. And as a student, I know that was very worrisome for me and very scary uh, to hear that, you know, the temperatures were rising, the ocean was rising, 
and that possibly California was going to go under, Florida was going to go under. I mean, do you remember any of that from the 80s? Okay, so, you know, I'm dating myself, but, you know, fast forward now, we're 30 years ahead. We've now switched from global cooling to global warming to climate change. And um, although I am just as passionate I would say, as everyone in this room, if you knew my background about helping the environment and uh, uh, reducing you know, our chemicals and being very good to our environment, um, it's concerning to me that we're, we're changing um, the bar. We keep on changing the bar. And also, um, I guess if you could just, I mean, answer that, uh, but... Um, I do wonder how much this is affecting our, ch as we hear um, our children are suffering, many from mental health crisis, of how much pressure and what we're doing to our children um, by, by talking about this so much, as I remember in the 80s, as a child, being scared. And this has only escalated from there. So has there been any studies done on that? Commissioner Kolesh, I'm not sure you have a response for that, but um, please feel free. Madam Chair, Representative, I, I don't have a specific citation for that, but we have heard from students and youth, and including tribal youth, about the challenges and, and the dire consequences that they're facing as well. Some have cited papers uh, that, that mention the, the impacts on mental health, and I particularly <laughs> think that what we hear from them mm -hmm. is that that exists and that's real, mm -hmm. but what they need from us is to take action and to stand up and, and actually meet some, what we know we need to do, which is reduce our emissions and begin building the resiliency so that they have a Minnesota that mm -hmm. is prepared for the changing climate, but is also doing our part to reduce emissions so that we, can, we are doing our part to then affect the, the global temperature change that is expected and projected with uh, with, with the projections. And the changing on the terminology comes down to uh, focusing on climate change because it's not just the warming of the planet that is the problem. It's the impacts that it's having on our landscapes, on our communities, and the people that we need to focus on. So the changing climate, we, we've heard about that with more heavy storms, more precipitation, more flooding, how that impacts us makes a, a significant amount of difference. And we're already seeing that in Minnesota with significant temperature increases, uh, seven degree, more than seven degrees in northern Minnesota, more than six degrees in central Minnesota, and more than five degrees Fahrenheit in the last century. And so that's why we're focusing on reducing emissions and then preparing ourselves for, for the, the changing climate that's already built into the system because of our past emissions. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you.